Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, my question is, uh, how can I um, maximize the reward of Hajj? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, wa ala rasulillah, wa ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. So whatever act of ibadah we offer, we have in the back of our minds that we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that deed. We want Allah jalla wa'ala to accept that action or that what you put forth, whether it's your salah or your charity or whatever goodness you helped with another person, you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ that indeed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only accepts from those who have taqwa. This is a very emphatic ayah, very profound and powerful verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us deeds or actions will only be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who can claim categorically I have the necessary amount of taqwa or fear or piety to say that my action has been accepted. None of us can. But we have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever we do, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. He knows that I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to be sincere and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept from us. Even though if we look at it, whatever we do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it can never be really good enough for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Allah jalla wa ala is the most merciful, is the most kind, and he accepts from his servants as long as we are trying bi ta'ala, knowing that all of us, we are all sinners. So brothers and sisters, to maximize the reward, first and foremost, I want to mention two things. Something that inshallah ta'ala, we have some form of control over, something that we can have an impact on, and we leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First one is that that action that you offer is to make sure that you only do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't seek anything from this worldly life. And number two, that the way that you do that action, the act of worship, this is how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us. You don't make it up as you go along. I'm following the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now concerning Hajj, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the sound hadith, لِتَأْخُذُوا عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ Take from me your rights of the Hajj. This is a very clear hadith that every single Muslim should perform the Hajj just as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed the Hajj. Our beloved Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam only performed Hajj once in his entire life. So the description of Hajj the most detailed, actually, description of the Hajj was narrated by the well-known companion Jabir radiallahu anhu. It's a very long hadith, and he describes how the Prophet ﷺ performed a Hajj. There are many, many other hadith which relate to us certain aspects of the Hajj in you know, greater detail. And when we bring everything together, we have a clear picture of how to perform the Hajj. But I'm talking about the elite. I'm talking about the very best, those who want to maximize and get the very most out of performing their hajj. What do I have to do? First and foremost, brothers and sisters, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of you having not only the correct intention, but this intention, meaning that it is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything that you do concerning the hajj, is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do not seek when you come back the title of Hajj. You are now a Hajji. That you want to tell everybody, I'm Hajji so and so. I performed my Hajj. And these type of titles that are given to certain individuals. Yes, if you perform the Hajj, no doubt it is a great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is at the end of the day, an ibadah, an act of worship, which is dedicated and is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not for you to go to the rooftops and to tell everybody, I performed my hajj. What are you seeking from the people? The people can't give anything back to you from the hajj that you offered. Do you seek praise and thanks from the people? We should not be seeking anything like this from the people. When you offered that hajj, you performed that hajj, the struggles that you 
inevitably will go through during the Hajj, this was seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward. So brothers and sisters, throughout the Hajj, whatever you face, whatever you may go through during the Hajj, remember in the back of your mind, a person who does not engage in complaining and in arguing, you want to maximize my reward, remember, the person who stays away from these things, you will have a reward ta'ala, which you can return back to your homes, back to your families like the day that you were born. Maybe you are in your late 50s or whatever age you are, you return back with absolutely no sin, no sin that you carry on your shoulders, subhanAllah. And that if you were to die in that state, that you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no sin. I mean, can you imagine that? A lifetime of sin. And as we know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, That all the sons, daughters of Adam, they are sinners. But the best of the sinners are those who return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking for forgiveness in a state of repentance. So all of our lives we are sinning and falling short. How many years of sins we have engaged in? But for what you do on four or five days, that transforms your connection and your relationship and what happens to you in the hereafter. You had 50, 60 years of sin. You performed Hajj, which is five days long. And those five days, because of the level of sincerity, of ikhlas that you had, dedicating everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing the Hajj, performing the Hajj, as close to how the Prophet ﷺ performed the Hajj. Yes, there may be certain time restrictions because of crowding and you cannot do that, but your intention is at the very least. If I was able to be at this place, I would be there. But because of logistics and because of organization, I have to be in my tent, I have to be on the coach or whatever the case may be. But, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ You feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as you could. You adhered and you did as much as you, uh, as much as you could in adhering to how the Prophet والسلام, he performed his hajj, then inshallah ta'ala you will be able to maximize your reward. There is no way to receive these rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that you purify your intention. And that best you can, you offer your hajj in the way that the Prophet وسلم, performed his hajj. There are no shortcuts to paradise, there are no shortcuts in your hajj. If you want to maximize the reward, you have to maximize and push yourself as much as you can to adhere to that what is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah jalla wa ala make it easy for all of the hujjaj. Ameen. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.